Hello everyone, my name is Christine Wingate and I'm a lecturer at the University of Iowa in the English as a Second Language program. I'm going to talk today about encouraging students towards independent pronunciation practice with the website American English Sounds. I've been teaching classes for a while for graduate students who want to be teaching assistants. And these classes are helping students to build their pronunciation and fluency so that they can be TAs. But I often have students tell me or ask me, teacher, how can I practice on my own? They felt like they weren't getting enough, even though we are meeting four days a week, 50 minutes a day. And they're right, because pronunciation takes a lot of work. Independent practice is really important for pronunciation in any language because we don't have enough time in our classes for pronunciation practice, especially if pronunciation gets mixed in with other skills. And in classes like ESL, we have students from a lot of different language backgrounds, and so not everyone is going to need to practice the same thing. Also, independent pronunciation practice is helpful because it builds students' self-advocacy, their ability to take charge of their own learning and meet their own needs and it creates a space where they can be free from language anxiety because they can practice what they want, however they want, and not worry about being judged for the mistakes they are making. So when my students started asking me this, I looked at what resources were out there and I wasn't very satisfied because for a lot of them, either you have to pay for them, which students spend enough on textbooks already, or they just didn't give students enough material for practice, even if they did give good explanation and demonstration of pronunciation features. So I decided to create my own resource, American English Sounds. This is a free teacher-created website that allows students to independently practice the individual sounds that they need to improve. So let's take a tour of this website. Here's what students will see on the home page and they will just see simple menus for vowels and consonants. Each one is organized by place of articulation, which part of your mouth pronounces the sound. So let's look here. You'll see that each sound is represented by a simplified phonetic symbol. It's not straight up IPA, but it's close. But there's also sample words to help students know what they're looking for and find what they need even if they don't know the phonetic symbol. So let's look at the sound A. Okay, when students want to practice the sound, they'll go to this page and they will see um, just some basic examples. They can listen to the sound a few times and become familiar with it. Then they can read an explanation of the sound, simple instructions for what their mouth should be doing to make that sound. For vowels, there's also examples of stressed and unstressed. So they can hear A as a stressed vowel in words like famous, or an unstressed vowel in words like Sunday. There's also spelling rules. We know that English isn't always that helpful with its spelling, but I do like for students to be aware of what spelling patterns might represent a certain sound. Then there's a grammar tip, and this isn't really going to teach them grammar rules, but it does need to make them aware of how pronunciation connects with meaning, and especially how pronouncing a sound in the wrong way might make them sound ungrammatical. So here, the grammar tip focuses on the suffix eight, which is very common in a lot of academic vocabulary. And so we know that if they have the suffix at the end of a verb, they have the A sound. And if they want to pronounce that suffix correctly, they need to master the A sound. Then there's some compare activities where the target sound gets contrasted with another similar sound, along with some minimal pairs. Students can hear the difference between the two sounds. Like here, we have A and E. And then they can do a short listening activity where they will hear one of two words, a minimal pair set, and they can guess which word they hear. And then the answer will be given in the recording. So there's two different contrasts. 
we have A and E, and then A and F for this page. Then the practice section starts with a list of 20 words. The reason there's 20 is because it pushes them to use the sound in a lot of different phonetic contexts. At the beginning of a word, end of a word, middle of a word, stressed, unstressed, cluster or combined sounds, one syllable, multi-syllable, you name it. It is important to have that variety of practice so that they're not just comfortable pronouncing the sound in one position, but can use it accurately in a lot of different places. Then there's sen sentences, and each sentence is loaded with three or four words that have the target sound. I encourage students to practice the individual words with that sound first, and then practice putting them together in sentences. Most of the recordings on the site are my voice, but it is good for students to hear other speakers from different accents or different genders or ages. And so some of my colleagues at University of Iowa graciously have recorded the words and sentences as well. And so students can pick which speaker they want to imitate in their, in their practice. The last section is my favorite because it gives students a speaking prompt that they can use in a meaningful task and practice putting that sound into natural speech. So here they can prepare by looking at this prompt. What do you want to be famous for? And they have a list of things to choose from, but each item on the list has the A sound. So no matter what they choose, they have to use that sound. And then they can record themselves talking about that topic. I really encourage them to share that recording with a teacher or tutor or native speaking friend and get some feedback on it. So that's the format for most of the site. If you have a continent page, we'll look at the one for P. It's very similar. It might talk about aspiration or other phonetic rules, and you'll see a list of consonant clusters. Where does that sound occur with another consonant, either at the beginning of a syllable or end of the syllable? And then there's a few other resource links uh, to other websites that I found helpful or general information that students might want to know. So how can you use this in an English class? Well, the way I've done it is I usually give a diagnostic to students at the beginning of the semester to assess their pronunciation needs. And then I write down a list of what they need to practice. I'll also begin the semester by introducing the sound system of English, along with basic phonetic symbols. And then I will recommend or require tutorials for each student to work through. It's very important for this to meet students' individual needs. So I try to give them some freedom in selecting, based on the list I've given them, what sounds they want to work on the most. And so this could be week by week, or you might tell them to do a certain number throughout the semester, or sometimes I will have students choose between this and other ways of practicing independently. It depends on the class and what they need the most. But when they do use this website, I try to collect a final recording from them of both the practice and the use it section. And this way I can tell them either you're doing this sound well, you're pronouncing it well, or try to narrow down the difficulty. So maybe students are pronouncing the sound well in one position, but not another. And this is where the word list with the different uh, words is helpful because I can tell a student, for example, you pronounce P correctly at the beginning of words, but at the end of the words, it still sounds like B. So go back and practice just those words where it's in that final position. You do have other options. You could assign tutorials to the whole class or do an in-class activity with one of the tutorials, especially if there's a sound that everyone needs to work on. For example, almost all my students need to work on the unstressed vowel schwa, and so we could use one of those altogether. Or I found this very helpful for one-on-one -on -one tutoring. If a student comes to me for tutoring or for office hours, then I might pull this up and work through one with them, and then I can expand on it or modify it as needed. 
but you're permitted to do whatever is most helpful for you and for your students. So this website is under a Creative Commons license. That means that you can adapt the tutorials for non-commercial purposes as long as credit is given to the original source. And you can find more information about that on the Creative Commons license that's on the site. I do find it helpful to give students some preparatory instruction if they're going to use this website. It helps for them to be familiar with simplified phonetic symbols that are used on the site, as well as some of the terminology for describing individual sounds, like what's a voiced consonant and what's a voiceless consonant. And that helps them to understand the explanations on the site a little bit better. I also like to talk about independent practice strategies that have been covered by other researchers. So using a site like this goes really well with some other strategies like covert rehearsal or spaced learning. And so sometimes students need ideas for how to practice well with this kind of resource. Like with many resources, this is still a work in progress. And so there are some features that will be added to the site in the near future. There will be an expanded compare section with interactive perception quizzes featuring multiple speakers. So students can practice hearing the sound contrasts and actually get a score for that. There will also be some list of academic words featuring each phony to help higher level learners who are really, really trying to practice academic vocabulary. So if you would like to keep up with these changes to the website and with anything new that comes, Feel free to connect with me on Facebook or Twitter. Just search for American English Sounds. And if you have questions about the site or about this presentation, feel free to contact me at my email address here on the screen. Thank you for listening. I hope you have found this very helpful.